Facebook, it's Colton Lindsay here with the WGR Live, right here, live on my podcast, talking with Mr. Al Toy Worldwide. One of the things I want to get really, really clear today is we're talking about the market crash of 2018. How many of you think that's really going to happen? We want to discuss what the market's doing here locally, at least in Utah and in Miami, and then hear from you guys what's going on across the nation because we are noticing some difference. How many of you guys watching live or recorded has noticed that the market is shifting right now? Put a yes in the comments if you have or a no if you have not. But here's what I've thought is the very interesting, most craziest observation which is I see a lot of people talking online about the market crash or is the market crashing or what's going on with the market blah 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 yada yada uh, so Elsie says yep she's noticed a, a little sim something different in her market uh, El Nunez James Daniel they both said yes they're noticing something shifting in their market as well so that's what we're going to discuss and particularly what has to happen over the next 75 days. I want you to write this number down right now. If you're live or recorded, 75 days you have to get shit together in order to finish this year strong. What's extremely important, listen, what's extremely important is you've got to finish December with the absolute best month of your entire year so that you hit 2019 running because we're not quite sure what's going to spin out this next year. Now, for you guys that are watching live, is the inventory up or is it down in your marketplace? Is it up or is it down inside of your marketplace? I'd love to hear from you guys. Cody says the inventory is down in Phoenix. We're looking in Utah and it's actually up a little bit, which is not, not, not crazy up. I, I just looked, we have about 1,500 active homes in my uh, area that I work, which is probably bigger for going to the Salt Lake market. Um, and we have actually higher number of under contracts here. Uh, El Nunez says that it's down there. Elsie says prices are up and sells down. Where are you at, Elsie? And El, oh, Boston. El Nunez is in Boston. Uh, where are you at, uh, Elsie? Shauna Overman. I want to give a big shout out to her. She's one of our mastermind partners. If you don't know her, you should get to know her. She has literally 20, count them, two zero. 20 deals currently under contract. So apparently the market doesn't suck in North Carolina, even though flow is on the way coming there. Okay, so uh, 20 is a pretty awesome number. And just an announcement too, coming up on November 12th, uh, the week November 12th, we were going to be having our next in-person mastermind. So if you guys are interested in being a part of that mastermind, uh, it's going to be amazing. Last time we brought in Jack Fontana, we did some awesome breath work. Uh, I'll just post right here in the comments the application where you can apply. Oh, Al Torrey decides to show up. I want to just share a riddle with you. I've been practicing it. For those of you guys that have seen my live prospecting videos on Tuesdays inside of the Facebook group. It goes like this. Ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes and bow-legged ants, I stand before you with my back towards you to tell you a story of one fine day in the middle of the night. Two dead boys brought up a fight. They stood back to back. They drew their swords and shot each other. The deaf policeman heard the noise and he came to get those two dead boys. Don't believe me? Ask that blind man over there. He saw it all. He saw it all. How are you, Al? Can you hear me? Dude, we can't hear you, Al. Al, there's absolutely no sound coming from you. Hold on, Hold on. can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can. Dude, we waited for like four minutes for you to, to get on. What the F was going on, bro? Man, I hope you had you some good stories me. for everybody here. I said, you let's go. Me, you text me, let's go, and then like six minutes later, we were waiting for it. Okay, Al, Dude, here fault. it is. Let's get into the conversation. The uh, market crash of 2018 seems to be the talk that the market's shifting. We hear the word shifting being used around a lot right now. So between yeah. now and the end of the year, uh, what I want to do is first identify, is the market actually shifting? Now, for everyone that's on here live now, and I already asked the question once, the live or replay, do you feel the market is shifting? Put a yet or put a one in the comments if you think it's shifting. Put a two if you don't think it's shifting. The next thing I want to talk about, once we've established where the market is, what has to happen, and you and I had this discussion, that's why we brought it up for the live stream, what has to happen over the next 75 days in order to absolutely make certain that the market does not chew agents up and, and swallow them and shit them out the other end, right? So that's what we mm -hmm. want to talk about. So we're already getting ones on the screen right now from the live watchers that people are yep. noticing the market is shifting. So what's your take on this, Al? 
Totally. Hey, so when, when we use the word uh, market crash, it's sort of funny because all we're saying is that there's a shift in the marketplace right now as far as, number one, we're seeing more days on market. Okay. Say okay. yes if you guys are seeing more days on market. Okay. So let's go. Let's go look at the facts. Okay. I tried to pull it up. The computer, the data from Florida, um, when I was pulling it up, it, it just kept crashing. So I have July data, which is not the most recent data. Um, and I tried to put, pull the quarterly up and obviously the quarter's not over yet. So I couldn't get it. But here's the, the facts. It says 42 from 42 days on market to 47. And it says here, um, one of the things that I pulled up and I told you right before, Right before we got on the call. And what market is, are you in, Miami? Or? Yeah, I'm in South Florida. And just a quick, quick plug, quick plug for those of you that don't know to miss the worldwide down here in South Florida. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at uh, Al Tori. I've got some good stuff coming up there in the next couple Al of days. Al Tori underscore. Al Tori underscore. underscore. Let's make sure we're clear on that. Yeah, somebody <laughs> took the Al Tori. The guy has one post, one follower, and, uh, and, and he won't give you my name. But it's Al Tori underscore. And it'll do. So make sure you go follow me on that. And um, yeah, so Colton, you know, the fact is that we're looking at two things. Number one, days on market is longer. And number two is interest rates are going, have been going up over the course of the last 12 months. Yep. And they're supposed to be going up twice again more this year. Um, so that tells you what, right, as far as the inventory goes. Inventory sits on the market longer and it's more expensive mm -hmm. to buy. What does that say? Yeah, so let's let's talk about what we're seeing with inside of that. And you guys watching right now, are you noticing inventory sitting on the market longer? Put uh, mm -hmm. uh, an L if it is, an S if it's not, uh, for shorter. What we're seeing in our market, Al, is this, is um, – the market has been really, really good. True or true, it's been great. Okay, it's been awesome. but what we're seeing is, is 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 sellers they want top dollar for their home. Number one, and number two is realtors. Most of them are pretty retarded, and they don't recognize the shift of the market that's happening. That I personally believe is seasonally. I don't think this is long term, guys. This is coming from me. So take it for what it's worth. I could be completely freaking wrong. I've just been in the business for 13 years, and I've watched every July, August, September do this. I remember the worst was 2013. We had a government shutdown. Who remembers the government shutdown? And we have Hill Air Force Base and the IRS right local to us, right? Um, so if, if it's getting longer on the market, or days are getting longer on the market, sellers are keeping their prices higher. Agents are not being skilled enough to get their homes priced correctly, so therefore they're not selling and agents are freaking out just a little bit, okay? So we just saw this, Stevie, Stevie Hahn said out of Florida, sellers are wanting crazy high prices and it needs to start leveling. Here's the yep. other thing that we're seeing, and I'm a prime example. So recently I, I, I went through the divorce and so I was trying to figure out, am I gonna sell my house or am I gonna keep my house? We've talked about this, what do I do, right? But I don't wanna downsize necessarily the quality of my neighborhood. I mean, Al, would you like to go to a, a lesser quality neighborhood at this point in your life? And do, 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 <laughs> at no cool point in my life. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> so then it's like, okay, I'm not willing to do that. But at the same time, if I want to go to a new neighborhood, I could do that, but it would be half a million dollars. And interest rates are now, I don't know, what are they, four and three quarters, roughly four, there? Right, so now five. I'm going to be four, four or $500 more to literally just move neighborhoods. So how many people are in that same boat as me? I mean, thinking about you guys and your customers, how many people in that four hundred to six hundred thousand dollar price range are like, you know what, dude, I can't replace what I got here because I got three years ago when rates were at four percent or three and yeah. a quarter, three yeah. and three quarters percent, right? So we're yeah. starting to see this pressure from from these sellers that I'll sell, but I want a ridiculous price. And guess what they want on the purchase? They want a great oh, yeah. fucking deal. Can they want, they want that? absolutely. So that's a bad mix in a market like this. <laughs> so we have, right now we have 4.9, 4.9 months of inventory. Just a little throw a little bit of data out there on that. 4.9, so five months uh, worth of inventory right now. That means that if we didn't list a home, right, um, for the next five months, all we did was sell. We would be selling homes for five months, right? So essentially. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like it's, it's TV just posted this. People can sell and make good money, but where will they go? Yeah. And if they're going to move, they have to be willing to pay today's prices at today's interest rates. Right? Yeah. And so if we see that trend continue where interest rates go up, even if prices stay level, even if prices stay level, affordability goes down. So fewer people can afford right. homes. I, I don't know what we're going to see happen here, Al, but I do know – 
that we are uh, definitely having some shifting months. So uh, yeah. Jared says in Oklahoma, they're at 3.6 months inventory. We're at two months inventory. You guys are at what, four and a half months inventory? Four Post in the comments down below where your your uh, months of inventory is. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Make sure you put where you're located as yeah. well. So we'll read off some of these numbers for you guys to see. Um, so let's discuss he, he, it. We understand the market shifting. Wait, you're going to read some stats? No, I was going to say, I was going to read some stats. And it, obviously we had uh, in, in the Tri-County area, which is Miami, Broward. And um, no, let's just say I'm looking only at Broward County. Broward County, because I have two different data and two different screens. Broward County, closed sales, 1,440 in the month of July. Um, and down, down in South Florida, this is Broward County, which is the busier County compared to Palm beach County. So Palm beach County and, and Broward County, Broward County tends to be the busiest, um, median time to sell is 94 days and median time okay. to contract is 52 days. Okay. So, so you're seeing, you're seeing 52 days is, is kind of that medium time for someone yeah. to get a contract on yeah. their, on their property. Mm -hmm. Is that an and, increasing number for you guys? It's sort of like just the same, actually, here, according to this. But um, it's a 57 versus 52. I mean, that's almost the same. But okay. um, So let's talk about, Al, how is this going to affect homeowners? How is this going to affect realtors? What has to shift? Well, so let's talk like, first about buyers. Let's talk first about buyers and sellers, and then we'll move to realtors. Well, as far as buyers and sellers, you know, it, it, this is the time to make that phone call to a seller that's on the fence. And a buyer that's on the fence, really, it's the time to make that phone call and say, hey, listen, have you been thinking about selling? I know you've been thinking about selling over the last two, two, you know, 12 months or whatever. Now would be the time to get them in the front door and get them into your office and talk to them. Um, yeah. and not only just to get an idea of what, what they want to do. It's our duty, our job. It's really our responsibility to educate these folks and telling them um, – you have a tripod issues. It's our job. It's our duty to educate sellers and buyers really about what the market's doing and to make an informed decision. Um, look, I put a property in the market on Tuesday. Um, we put a property in the market on Tuesday and we priced it 6%, 5% just below what other agents are doing. And we got a full, pa full price cash offer coming in today, this morning. So if you price them right ahead of the market, hold on, it's getting loud here. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, you got the kids in the background. How many of you guys got yeah. kids rolling around in your life? Put kids in the comments down below, and we we, we totally understand. <laughs> yeah, honey, hold on. What's up, baby? There Just bring are. her on. Let's bring her it. on the show. Let her talk about the market. So here's what I would suggest for sellers: if you're going to make the move, make it happen, and stop worrying about the market getting better. I'll have a prime example. I have a buyer. That has literally, and, and if he wasn't such a good uh, friend with it, we wouldn't be showing him home. But we've, we've showed him homes for four years. And Daddy, we've watched the home yeah. prices go up. And we've watched the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the interest rates go up. And so the cost for him, his affordability has shrunk. So what he can get for $300,000 today, and you all know this, is dramatically less than what he could have got four years ago for 300000 if he would have just pulled the trigger and bought then. So we're going to continue to see that. So meaning your affordability is going to get tougher and tougher and tougher, even if prices don't go up. Interest rates are going to go up. Okay. The other thing that we've got to look at is we're seeing a great economy when it comes to very low um, unemployment. Utah is fantastic right now with unemployment, but what we're not seeing is we're not seeing wages go up. We're not seeing the average W-2 employees' wages get paid more money. We are seeing realtors make about the same to a little bit more, but they're doing fewer deals because there's more realtors in the mix. I know for a fact we are on pace to maybe do what we did last year with transactions closed, which is I'm a bummed about that, but we are dramatically higher in our volume and our average value of transaction. That's one of the things we do try to focus on is to increase that paper transaction. But what we're seeing is, is, is realtors are being less qualified, and this is gonna hurt sellers and buyers, less qualified to know how to deal with this market, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's ask, answer some questions about dealing with this market. Elsie asked, what do you tell your buyers that this is the best time to buy when you know home prices are going to continue going down? Elsie, we don't know prices are going to go down. 
we don't know they're going to go down. They could actually stay very, very stable. In fact, what you're going to say to your buyers is, would you rather get a house now when you know the market is where it's at? Or would you rather wait six months, even if prices don't go up, but interest rates go up and your payment goes up 300 bucks? Which would you rather choose? Save money now or spend more money later? It's up to you. I'm down with whatever. you got to paint a picture of the spectrums of the reality. We know rates are not going to 3.5%. So anyone that hopes that's going to happen is pie in the sky, smoke up in the air. It's not happening. Literally, to keep the economy moving, we've got to push rates up. The fact that they're as low as 4.75 still tells me that the economy is not fully recovered. In fact, I believe the real estate market's not the problem. The fake economy is the problem. All right. I totally so, agree with you 100%. What so would getting you tell people- buyers? Yeah, you basically, first of all, you got to get them in the front door and you got to figure out what their affordability is. Okay. And in this marketplace, if they're going to buy a property in our marketplace right now, South Florida, single family home, um, it's a competitive market in a certain price point, like 250 to 295. Um, anything under 300 is still a competitive market. Um, but what we're seeing now is the second problem, which is an appraisal problem. So even some of these properties that are selling for 300,000 in our marketplace, they're not appraising anymore. So it's, um, it's, 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 it's the problem of the problem. So I guess what, what we tell buyers is essentially number one is let's find out what the affordability for you would be. And based on that number, let's go out there and find a property that's just priced, you know, you know, at market, if not below and get go in there and offer, you know, literally we've had to offer full price because it's a competitive market in that price point. And then we put a contingency for an appraisal. So we educate the buyers on the importance of having an appraisal contingency on some of these deals that, that we're putting contracts under. So if we put a property under contract at three, uh, 490, 488 just recently, and we put an appraisal contingency on it just to make sure. So my goal is number one, attack, uh, educate the, the sellers on the market right now. And the interest rates are going up and it's going to decrease the affordability of buyers. Number two for me is educate buyers on their affordability. And if we do find the property they do like, and they feel that- Hold on, Al, feel- hold on, hold on. I want to yeah. highlight this. The word Al used is affordability is what the, the topic is, not prices. Prices may or may not go up. They may or may not even go down a little bit. I doubt they'll go down much but it's the interest rates we've got to really pay attention right. to and that massively affects your affordability. Okay, right. sorry, Al, I had to interrupt you. No, no, totally. Put that and, and that's why we start seeing the, you know, the effects of that, which is increased days on market. Once we start seeing the increased days on marketplace, then essentially it's the first, and, and it starts seeing it first, first in, uh, in luxury market, but in our luxury market, that's where we start to identify the problems. Um, you know, we, we, we start looking at million dollar properties and above and those properties stick around long. And then we look at golf communities, those golf community properties stick around a lot too. And then those HOPA, the 55 and over communities as well. So it's really not a market crash more so than it is really a market shift to becoming more of a normal, a normal market. It's really becoming a normal market. I mean, look, you look at Dylan, he just joined us. If you look at Dylan, he's in New Jersey. I mean, his market has been depressed since 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 the, the last depression. You know, his market's still been depressed. So some markets never recovered. Our markets, like in South Florida, that did recover and came back with prices at or above where we were in 2006. Our marketplace now is seeing like, okay, hey, we've gotten this high. There's a lot of money in the marketplace. It's sort of like a fake economy, sort of what you were talking about earlier. And the fake economy is creating, it's putting, pouring all this money into the, we're still closing cash deals. I mean, look, I'm going to give you some facts. Yeah. Listen to this cash deals. Hey gang. Hey gang. It's Dylan Burnett. (laughs) Mr. Dylan Burnett in the house. You know, I would dare say that Dylan lives in the absolute worst market. Don't move to New Jersey. Yeah, he's in Jersey. Jersey. Hey, Dylan, you mind sharing hey, I'm with, in Jersey. With us what your market is doing in Jersey? Um, yeah, type it in the type it in the notes. What's Dylan. up, to everybody? Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I got some good stuff that I've been <laughs> posting recently, and uh, Altori underscore, and we're gonna be posting daily, um, daily on the market. Basically, uh, there's Cody. Cody's in a great market. He's up in Arizona. Hey, did you hear that Cody Barton made a comeback to the real estate industry? Cody's stepped always out, making stepped comeback. back in. Yeah. He told me he was drifting, but he stopped drifting. He st- took that Tokyo drift and got focused traction moving forward. 
everyone is moving away from New Did Jersey. You I would recommend you Cody about the mastermind because he's probably a good fit. I think he'd be a good fit. <laughs> I don't know why Cody hasn't rejoined the mastermind, quite yeah. honestly. Speaking of mastermind, I put the in the comments down below. If you guys want to apply, the next mastermind we're going to do is the week of November 12th. Okay, I'm working on an event where Brian Cassell is going to come out. We're going to host that together. It's going to be a two-day event speaking with uh, – training with me and Brian Casella. Uh, but then we're going to have a two-day for my VIP Platinum Partners in, uh, in Ogden, Utah. We're going to have it in our, in our new office space. We're going to show you how our team functions. Um, it's going to be really freaking awesome, but you got to apply to join our mastermind. Let me just tell you some of the results from people in our mastermind. Number one is uh, Shauna and Brian Overman, freaking rock stars. I already mentioned they have 20 pending contracts right now. They're on track to close about 120 transactions this year, and their transactions are small, so they'll still make six, $700,000 this year in gross commissions. They're expanding. They just opened their own brokerage. They're creating financial freedom. Uh, it's amazing what they're doing. David Massey, one of our partners, he's amazing as well. He just closed a $36,000 month. When he first joined working with this, he was failing miserably. Now, uh, I'm guessing he'll be between $150,000 and $200,000 this year. And he's, what, only two years in, yeah. in the, the business? Super, super new. So, so $150,000, $200,000 doesn't sound like a lot until you realize he's two years into the business. That is freaking amazing, okay? The other thing we got to look at is you got Al and Denise who are freaking amazing in South Florida. I don't know where they're going to be at this year, but it's going to be awesome. Where are you guys going to be at this year? Like $20, $20 we're, $30? Yeah, we're, we're meeting our goal if we get back to work, right? We were in Alaska for a yeah. little bit. Uh, we, we How get long back did you guys go to Alaska for? 10 days? We were out there for 10 days. Uh, we flew into Vancouver. And uh, yeah, but we're on track to hit our goals and our numbers are, are solid this year. Again, we've been up 25% yeah. every year for the last three years, which is very solid and, and, and it's a healthy uh, business. Uh, we do have new hires coming in this year, which we obviously have to address with the payroll expenses. But as far as our track and our numbers and our units, thank God for all our supporters and all our good, great clients that, that we were able to meet and uh, actually exceed our goals. So the mastermind has always played a big role for me. Uh, one of the books that I pulled out this last week while I was on vacation was uh, Think and Grow Rich, you know, and one of the things that Napoleon mm -hmm. talks about a lot is the mastermind, the power of the mastermind. And I don't want to make this so much into just that, but just the power of the mastermind. I want to leave you with that thought in mind. Colton, you froze, bro. Are you OK? I'm, I'm here, dude. I don't know why I froze. My voice is still here. <laughs> so let's talk about this because I want to start moving to the direction to the towards the end of this conversation. Number one is what do realtors got to do between now and the end of the year? What do realtors have to make happen over the next 75 days to make absolutely certain that they finish November and December with an absolute. Freaking live stream. I'm going to text her and let her know. It's going to work. There you are. Identify how many days agents going to work from now until the end of the year, Colton. How important is that? Identifying how many days okay. you're going to work. Okay. So we, in the mastermind, we talk about RPMs, smart day, smart week, smart months, and taking 15 to 20 minutes every single day to get crystal clear on what are the outcomes I want to create. So part of that outcome that you've got to create as realtors is you've got to identify how many action-packed days are you going to put in between now and Thanksgiving. You've got to be really, really clear on that. That's step one. What else has to happen now? Well, number two, identify really mm -hmm. what the what next else? step would be to call the right people to call, right? I mean – you got to identify yep. who you're going to call, who you're going to grab your deals from, and I mean, who you're going to help, you know, so identify who those people are. So you got to identify who you're going to contact. I recommend right now more than ever, if you haven't noticed the market shifting, and we talked about this in the WGR Academy, is you got to create attraction-based prospecting and attraction-based marketing. That's two parts. Part one is you got to put people into your network. That's the prospecting and following up and having conversations with them. We're having nine to 10 conversations with people in our network per year. Most people out there aren't even calling them once or twice a year. We're having nine to 10, okay? You've got to start generating deals from your network. It's no longer about who you know. Remember the old saying, Al? Not what you know, who you yeah. know. Do you remember that? It's who knows Write you this now. Down. It's who knows you. Who knows Al Torrey in Miami? Yeah. One of our mastermind partners, Ryan Riggins, has an email list of almost a half a billion, 500 million. That's so That's many incredible. people. <laughs> right? Five, maybe I'm making that number up. It seems really high now. Sorry, I did make that number. <laughs> 500,000. <000. laughs> 
<laughs> Let's just say it's a lot of people. It's, no, it's 500,000, not 500 million. I got to locate it away. 500,000 realtors worldwide. He lives in Oahu and bless his heart that that island's still there after the hurricane that went through. He lives in Oahu. He's receiving up to seven potential referral leads per month, or I'm sorry, per week from wow. realtors outside of the marketplace. Why? Because it's who knows him. It's who knows him. He's been able to, he plays a thousand dollars a month just to keep his email list alive. And that's just for the email list. Okay. But we got to know where we're able to spend our money. Um, our, the WGR sales team, in, we receive a referral on average every single month from realtors outside of the marketplace. But really where we captivate is through our local network. For example, Creations Utah sends us about two, currently about two referral leads per day. Um, so you got to be able to identify sources like that. Uh, and that's what's going to really take people forward. So as you're making the calls, you got to do it with an outcome of not just setting the appointments. That is important. But are you building your network? Are you making it so people know who you are? It's like, uh, here's an example. And I shared this with um, a couple people the other day. I went to uh, Maverick. It's a local gas station to get coffee the other morning. And I'm getting coffee. I got my I Love My Life shirt on. And a guy comes up. He's like, hey, Colton. I'm like, hey, what's up? And I tell this, I tell my, uh, the members of Prospect Alliance about this all the time. You got to, your people farm. You're not going to recognize them on the street, but they're going to recognize you. He comes up and he said, hey, Colton. I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's like, it's Tim Session. I'm like, hey, Tim. I knew him from our, 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 our database. I spoke to him for the last four years, 10 times a year. I'd never met him in person, never seen a picture of him. But he walked up to me and said, hey, Colton. Why? Because he sees my vlogs. He sees my emails. He hears the phone calls. He sends us referrals. We've done referrals from him before. And I've never met him in real life. That is what a realtor's got to do, not only for the next 75 days, but going forward. Because technology, and Jeff Latham spoke about this on the podcast the other day, we are freaking naive to think that our industry is not in the olden gate, like the golden years, meaning we're past the peak stage of the real estate industry as realtors. People talked about it couldn't change for travel agents. How has travel agency changed today? Can you not go book an entire freaking event, uh, travel on your uh, Expedia or whatever, right? Yeah. The cheapo air and stuff, right? You don't need to do it through a travel agency. Now, but here's what's interesting about travel agents. There are still great travel agencies that exist, but a lot of them got out. So are you going to be some of the great realtors or are you going to be a bunch that get out? And so in order to move forward through this shift, as technology continues to come at us, is we've got to build that network on a high level. And then we got to use technology to freaking just do what everyone else does. Repetition is the mother of all skill. Yep. I got to make those motherfuckers think I'm the only realtor. Yep. And, and I'm calling them motherfuckers as cool people, not like bad people, right? <laughs> I get into it sometimes. So uh, what else over the next 75 days? You uh, got to yeah. know how many years you're going to work, who you're going to call. You got to be building your network. What else? Building network and delivering value. One of the things you mentioned there, which is mm -hmm. awesome, is you've called these, you called this guy Tim, whatever, whatever his name is. You called him 10 times over the last 12 months. You know, and we're calling yep. people. We use the dialer that we use. We call, we text, we, you know, we call people and just, you know, to check in with them. You know, sometimes, you know, how about the event that you throw every year? So how about planning your next, you know, event for your sphere? Um, an event yep. that, can, that can bring people together, you know, bowling event or whatever. You know, we throw birthday yep. parties. We invite our guests in. We really want to bring value in. But at the end of the day, when, when the Internet, you know, the internet has transformed so many industries, but one thing is it hasn't changed the bond that human beings have with other human beings. You know, mm -hmm. I have a relationship with certain people that I could probably go and do it on my own, but I'd rather have a professional handling my stuff because professionals handle, you know, professionals. But one yep. critical part of that is the hard work is hard, right? Let's be honest, man. Yep. It's, it's hard for me to get flying from Alaska yesterday. And I was in my office at 825 this morning making calls. I set an appointment for Friday, you know, and, and I was on the phones, man. I was back at it today, you know, and, and people were telling me yesterday, hey, you're, you're going to be all exhausted tomorrow, Wednesday. Man, I'm back at it today. And here I am doing a live stream that we, you know, we had scheduled to do. So the goal is delivering value for people and committing and delivering on the commitment. It's all about the promises. If I make a promise to a client of mine that I'm going to deliver something, even if I overcommit it, I'm going to deliver. I got to deliver. Over deliver. Right. Over deliver. Right. That's, that's so economy. here's what I that's want you guys to scrap. Over committing, over delivering. It's in my mind, it's a new economy. I will fucking find a way to deliver. If I say I'm going to do something, I can either be a pansy about it and not make it happen or I can figure it out. I can find a way. I choose to make it happen. My life, my show, my reality, I will not be denied. 
I will create, I create so much massive value. I find a way to make it happen. I find a way to win. You've got to have that attitude. I believe that's the emotional state management. That's 90% of your successes, which is the cycle, psychological side. Of it. It, I mean, it, it is so important where I see people, realtors fail, buyers and sellers, people in general fail is they do not have the psychological stamina. They are operating and making decisions based on fear, based on anxiety, based on what they don't have scarcity. or what's going on, scarcity, the market shifting. I can guarantee you, the WR sales team, we're going to take market share as this market shifts. 100%. We're going, to have, we're going to have more and more customers coming into our database because what Al said, hard work is hard and we do the hard work and it always pays off. Yep. If you guys are watching live, drop an L in the comments. If you're watching the replay, drop an R. Make sure at the bottom, because I know you're on your mobile devices, if you're on this live stream, um, make sure you turn on that notification so you see all these uh, awesome yep. pieces of content we're putting out there. And let's, sh go ahead. No, I was going to say, I just saw Stevie's comment, you know, boom, she's in a great market up in Jacksonville. I'd love to hear from her what her market is doing up there because she's in a phenomenal market, Jacksonville. I went to school in Gainesville and we were two hours away and, and we, you know, I just, I just know it's a great market up there. So it'd be great to hear from other folks in Florida how their market's doing. Um, yeah, but yeah, hard work is hard. Delivering value is the new market we're in. You know, it would be a fool to think that the Zillow and the Redfin and all those guys won't be affecting. Um, what, what's the angry face on Amy's, uh, comment? I don't know if someone angry at Amy out. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. it is going to affect us. Um, here's something very interesting and I cannot tell you the name of the company, but it's a company I work very closely with. They have over 19,000, um, active users on their software. And they are seeing over the last 18 months, progressively more and more realtors default on their credit card payments. So what does that tell you? We've got more sharks in the water fighting for the chum with more chum getting harder and harder to come. So you gotta create your own blue ocean. You gotta get out of where the yeah. shark fest is. Hence, creating your network, you create a whole new blue ocean if you know the idea of red ocean, blue ocean concept. Shifting gears, I wanna talk about the mastermind coming up November 12th. Uh, I want to talk about the WGR Mastermind in general. I think, I think it's something we haven't really discussed. It's kind of been in the shadows. I know we talk, I talk about the Prospect Alliance. I talk about prospecting master traction based product. I talk about fearless agent all the time. But let's talk about the Mastermind, okay? Uh, it's, it's, it's a two uh, full day, three uh, uh, nights. What is it? Three nights, two full days um, where we are just in depth breaking down business. Real estate, number one, financial freedom, number two, and how do you create that inner certainty, that personal fulfillment, okay? So let's talk about New Orleans. What was your experience there, Al, and why would these people be crazy not to want to apply and be a part of something like the WDR Mastermind? Well, for the last few years, uh, the last three years, I've been part of the Mastermind, and for me, what it does is clarify the next quarter, the next year, and the next 18 months of planning for me. So we sit down, we dissect our businesses, and we put into place the key people that will play a role over the next six months until we meet at the next event, if that makes sense. So one of the things that I did during our last mastermind in May is I wrote down on my list, okay, I got to get the marketing person and I got to get better with my ads. One of the things, um, one of the things uh, that I realized is that um, I, I just got distracted. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I realized is I needed to do that, but I had to hire somebody to do it. But what the attraction model uh, training system that you've developed and Greg has worked on, he's in our mastermind as well, is helping me put the right person into place that can use the tools that are there to train them how to do the marketing so I don't have to do it myself. Does that make sense? So, so let's talk about one of the strategies that you had used, which was retargeting, right? And yep. um, I think you had a couple examples. One person said, dude, like, I can't get away from you, right? But the other one was, I think it really, I think it led you to a big listing you just recently had. Or am I making that up? Is Absolutely. that a story I'm making Absolutely. up? Absolutely. Took a great listing from a lot of our retargeting ads from our open houses and our videos from our mega open house that we did. And uh, this seller who I've been talking to since like last year, November, uh, would list it with another uh, agent before, got, get, gave me the list and called me and I got it. 10% uh, price reduction, priced well, and I took it based on all my marketing, all my presence online and remarketing ads. And then I got a call from a girl named Wendy who said to me, hey, Al, can you do me a favor? Take me off. I keep seeing your video, your stuff everywhere. And I don't know. I said, I don't even know how you're seeing it, but obviously we're doing a great job. We'll be glad to take you <laughs> off. She was giving me a compliment and she didn't realize she was giving me a compliment, but I understand. You know, it's okay. You know? Right. Yeah. I'll give you an example of what the results are from attraction-based marketing. We, we 
this is what we go in depth, right? Like there's the training program and all of the mastermind partners have access to every one of my trainings that I personally produce. That's financial freedom. That is prospecting mastery. That's the prospect and license, prospect and lines. And that's the, the WGR attraction based marketing. But we go in depth talking about this and here's the results that, that you can begin to count on going forward. So David has already taken two deals from he's been working on it, which two deals doesn't sound like a lot, but when it pays $10,000 a deal, that's $20,000. How many of you guys would take an extra 20 grand by shifting your techniques and getting a blue ocean and stop competing with everyone else? Yeah. So this commission what, is $100,000. Here's an example. The one I took on from doing the, the retarget ads. It's a $100,000 commission. I mean, that's worth it. A $100,000 commission. Yeah. I guess it's worth it. I guess it's worth it. Here's an example. And it's not $100,000. It's a $7,000 commission, but I'll take it. Is the Friday right before you flew out to Alaska, I got a phone call from a past client of mine. He said, hey, Colton. Great news, we wanna buy a rental property. I'm like, awesome, let's do it. He says, and we already wrote an, an offer on a property. And I'm like, ah, oh, not so great news, right? Because <laughs> right, he wrote an offer. And he said, don't worry about it. It's with the builder, it's new construction. We told him you're our guy, we put your name on the Repsy. Boom, by next Monday, I had the entire file sent over to my assistant. I have yet to see the file myself and it's processing through because that's what we've set up our system to do. And guess what? We get paid by building relationships. And he said, to this, said this to me on the phone, Al. He said, listen, I wanted to make sure you got paid this commission to say thanks for all of the awesome appreciation events you invite me and my family to. Those were his exact freaking words. That's was awesome. it worth $7,000? How many of you guys want more transactions like that happening in your life and in your business? Put a yes in the comments. I yep. love Ricky Carruth. I've been speaking a lot with him lately over at Zero to Diamond. And him and I are on a very similar idea of how we have to do this. It's not about the deal. It's about the relationship. And if you can build the relationship and you can make it so that people know who you are, then guess what? That's who they're going to trust as the market continues to shift. As the market shifts, more realtors are going to fail. More buyers are going to struggle. More sellers are going to have challenges understanding what is the right decision. Now, if the realtors are coming in with a low sense of certainty and they're super uncertain, that energy is going to vibrate off to the sellers. The sellers are already uncertain because they're not clear on the market. In fact, because of the, all, of the amount of information out there available today, buyers and sellers are getting more and more confused. And when you're yep. making decisions from a state of confusion, how does that turn out? It doesn't turn out great. Mm -hmm. So you as the real estate professional, it's got to come with absolute fucking certainty that you know exactly what to make happen. And you're going to create that presence in such a way that buyers and sellers will contact you and you will deliver. That's the other part. That's Not only the, are you confident that you will deliver, you actually deliver over and over again. And <laughs> you cannot be afraid trying to figure out, well, how am I going to do it? Don't worry about it. Jeff lays them. Go, you, know, you watch the interview I do with Jeff. I sure. love what he said. He said, the plan is not having a plan. It's just being certain that it's going to happen. Yep. And then you take that step and you figure it out. And you do it. That's it. And putting the work behind it. And with your clients, putting the same your work thing. Behind Dude, that's awesome that you got that referral from uh, your uh, client appreciation events. I got to make sure I get my invite for the next one because I've heard that they're pretty awesome. Um, did I tell you what, man? It's exciting to build relationships with people. It's the joy of this business, and it's the reason why I went to pharmacy school initially. But there was no bond in that relate because you know a lot of these corporations are running the business differently. In real estate, we get to choose how to run our business, and, and uh, relationship based is the way that I like to do it. Um, so we've been doing that well for the last few years, and thanks to the mastermind for me, it's given me a lot of great ideas to focus on what to focus on next and how to find the right key person to put in that place to go from there. So totally agree with you. So let's talk about the three things we discussed at the mastermind again, real estate, building your real estate sales business. Yeah. Let's start there. What are some of the topics, the conversations that revolve around real estate business? I believe you can be very successful making a lot of money selling as an individual agent. Hands down, you can do that. Ricky Carruth is a prime example, million dollars a year. Okay. What you cannot do is leverage your time. Here's the one thing and I'm going to call Ricky out on this because I freaking love him and I can do that. He's always talking about the grind. The daily grind is the name of his podcast or something like that. Do you want to grind your life away? Put yes in the comments if you love to grind your fucking life away or put a no in the comments if you want to live it with essence and joy, if you want to not be a slave to the business. So you've got to be able to identify. Are you going to be an operator, a business operator where you're in it all the time? Or are you going to be a business owner where you're out of it, where you don't have to be there when the monies are coming in? 
So Al, what are some of the things we discussed about building a real estate sales business that allow you to become more of an owner versus an operator? Leverage is one of them. Leverage. So let's talk about that. How can we leverage different ways? And how, let's also talk about how do we go in deep with this in, in our mastermind, in, in the live events? Well, you know, we leverage a lot of the things that we, you know, we hire the ISAs, you know, to make some phone calls for us in certain areas that we market. You know, we, you know, we, we leverage our marketing person that we're, we're interviewing. I interviewed somebody two weeks ago uh, to tell him that we um, were looking for another ISA. He wasn't a good fit, but I have another interview lined up with somebody else. So that's one way we leverage. And I learned that through the mastermind. Um, yep. The market shifting for me, all that means is that I need to get focused and intentional on the way we capture more market share, which is educating and working hard for our clients and capturing our new clients to make sure we deliver the value to them. And that one way is leveraging with a transaction coordinator, leveraging with an ISA, which is, you know, an in-house sales agent, you know, leveraging yeah. with somebody that can deliver, you know, the, 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 the phone calls and, and, and the follow-ups after we do a showing, all these things that we need to leverage. Because my goal every day is to make sure I find the right people that need a strong and powerful agent, a powerful agent to help them. Because it's a, it's a duty right. line to do that. Yeah. And that powerful agent does not have to be you. It could be someone on your sales team. Yeah. Right? I look at the powerful right, so agent. We got Jeremy. We got German. We got yeah. Raiden. We got people that get out and go out. And part of what we have to be able to do as business owners is instill the certainty from this core right here into the people that work with us. Because yeah. of Raiden or German or Jeremy or Autumn, they have the absolute certainty that they can go perform even though they might not have the experience that I have. When they have that certainty, they will find a way to victory as well. Yeah. It's about going to victory as a team, yeah. not the team working for me as an individual or yeah. you as the leader, but yeah. me, you said it a hundred times, creating value. value. Write that down. That is the freaking secret. I don't care if it's overused. That's it. That's Create it. so Great much value. freaking value. You right. always find a way to victory and you don't freaking have to worry about how it's going to happen. You yeah. just do it. You commit to it. Yeah. You make it commit happen. To it. And make, it's all about the little promises, keeping the little promises. Look, Holton, I just closed two deals last week and I was in here September 4th and the 5th. Two deals. I saw them on my realtor board and uh, I never stepped foot in that house. Never stepped foot in either one of those two properties. But we deliver the value and they left a gr great review for us. And the key is being the leader myself to make sure that our agents are empowered to go out there and, and deliver more value to our clients. Like I said to the guy that we're interviewing this week, I said to him, look, our mission statement is very clear. And I said it to him, you know, we deliver value to all customers and everyone that comes to contact with us. And that's what we do for them. So the market shifting, market crashing, whatever it is, it doesn't matter because people have changed in their life. People get married, people have kids, people get divorced. You know, people, people have job transfers and people have to sell and buy homes. And who do they look for? A powerful agent to help them. I mean, I have, I mean, I have. They'll feel your energy. They'll yeah. feel you. I want you to think about this. I'm going to just test. And you guys tell me if I'm completely wrong because I, did, I just want to, to demonstrate. How many of you can sense my energy when I come live? How many of you that have done a live coaching call with me can feel the energy breathing through the fucking phone? Yeah. People can feel that. Absolutely. They can sense what you're putting yeah. out there. And if you're putting out this energy of scarcity and uncertainty and fear and lack and, and, right. and, and, and frustration, ir irritation, impatience, you're over. You're done. They smell it all over you. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree with you. So, but again, like I said earlier, working hard work is hard. You know, working hard is hard. But the support of the You know what else is hard? Hard decisions are hard. Absolutely. Hard decisions are really hard. You know, Nicholas is in my marketplace. He just joined us right now. The good cat. I've had lunch with him before. He's a realtor here in our area. I like to hear his feedback on the market here locally, what he's doing. But we're sensing a market shift. And for me, the mastermind, we've been talking about a year ago in Miami in our mastermind we did in Miami Beach. We talked about the market shifting. Remember that. So we've been talking about it for yep. a year now. Yep. Okay. So number one, we're going to be talking about how do you shift through the shifting market live in, uh, it's actually going to be in Utah, I'm in Utah. I, I, I've heard that it's the most awesome place to visit in all the United <laughs> States. But what's cool is we're going to bring you into my office space. The one we, and hopefully the freaking thing's done. We've been working for months to build out our space. But we're going to bring you in and share with you how our operation works so you can begin to build your entire operation as well that way. doesn't matter if you're a one-man band or if you've got a team, you're going to want to be there. Okay, I'm going to bring in special guests. Um, one of them, Amanda Schleniger, who's a local agent in my market. She's going to be there. Did 91 units last year. Her team is crushing it. Um, I'm working on confirming with Spring Benson to be out there. I might have someone else coming from the East Coast. Brian Casella is going to be there. So these are some of the things you want to that are going to put some value that's going to be there to help you shift 
and, and make this happen. Um, number two is financial freedom. We're talking about financial freedom because so many realtors, they churn through their commissions and they're broke because even though they maybe make 100, 200, 300, 500 thousand dollars a year, they've got to go make that every single year to continue their lifestyle. So we want to talk about how do you shift that? Jeff Latham talked about this the other day. This is coming, guys. If you're not shifting your thinking to create financial freedom and creating passive residual income through your business, there's a business you're in, the business you're getting into. you got to understand and shift that. We're going to go in that deep. So how has, how has the financial freedom aspect impacted you, Al, since you've even opened up the conversation with inside of the mastermind? Are you kidding me? Totally, man. I just got back from a trip in Alaska. It was a super expensive trip of my lifetime. You know, with the kids, and that was all part. What of was the, that? Twelve grand. It was about grand? fourteen thousand, and it was all part of the plan. You know, it was all part of the plan. We had it in our in our. You froze, Al. Where'd you go, Al? I don't know what happened to Al. Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost Al Tory. But what he was just talking about was when he just took off to uh, Alaska with his family. What's cool about this for? Since last November, when we were in the Miami Mastermind, we've had um, Miami, New Orleans since then. Um, Al, if you're there, you're going to have to inject yourself. I don't, I don't know how to bring you back on, man. You're frozen there. But we talked about creating that step-by-step -step way to be able to um, – Al, we can't bring you back on. It's not letting you come on camera, so you're going to have to invite yourself on camera. Um, but we talked about how do you get set up so that your business is leveraged in the right way, but you're also creating money while you're, while you're gone. How is it that money keeps paying you while you're in Alaska and you just dropped 14 K to be, I don't remember how many days he was there for, but, uh, went on a Disney cruise, which is phenomenal. And then he goes up and sees the glaciers and the wells and the cool stuff with his family. You got his three-year-old, his six-year-old, and his nine-year-old daughter that they get to go and experience that. How would you like to be able – hey, Al, you're going to have to ask yourself to get back on. It says that you can't connect. So, um, so how would you like to experience that? So that's the other thing. The third thing, which I think is the most important, I personally believe this. This is, this is the part – so as a marketer, as a business owner, as a sales trainer, as, a, as, a, as a, uh, an influencer that impacts lives, you have to identify that it's two things. Giving people what they want versus what they need, okay? And Al's coming back on, it looks like. Up, uh, Al. Actually, I don't know where you happen to go. Oh, let's see if I can add you. Okay, so you got to understand giving the people what they want, and then there's what they need. This is one of those things that you need that nobody wants. It's the personal fulfillment side, the personal fulfillment side that you deep in your core you know you are here for a purpose, and that every single day everything turns out exactly how it's supposed to turn out. Not only that, but you're enjoying it with peace and tranquility. Al, let's talk about that part of the mastermind. We barely touched on the financial freedom. We dive in deep in that. I can manage your cash flow and things in November in, in Utah. If you guys want to be there, there's a, a button to apply. You have to apply. Not everyone gets to come in. If you have questions about it, reach out to me or Al via Messenger. But let's talk about the personal fulfillment side because that is one place I don't believe any, anyone's really discussing out there on a regular basis very little in the mastermind. So Al, Al, did you freeze Al freaking freeze? No, no, I'm here. Can you hear me? No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I can I can hear you, but I just can't see you. So go ahead. Talk oh, about real. that part. Well, you know, one of the things, man, you can I, I go out there and chase deals like for the last years. Uh, a few years I would just go out there and chase the deals and do a great job for customers and clients. But it wasn't fulfilling, right? Because whatever money you get, you're going to go buy more toys. You're going to go on more vacations. You're going to do this and do that. But one of the things that changed for us was when we hired um, like it, 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 it ties right into the financial freedom part of it, which we hired our financial people to take care of all our P and L's and everything else. It gave me freedom to spend more time with my kids and my family. You know, that's one of the things mm. that was the first thing I leveraged in my business. And once I did that, I was able to spend more time with my kids and my family and, and be literally with them when I'm with them. One a key thing that we learned and we did a lot of in the mastermind when we were there is, um, with Jack Fontana, we did the breathing, uh, you know, yeah. breathing David Wim, uh, uh, Wim Hof, the Wim Hof. Back in November of last year, December, when you came down here to South Florida, you stayed in West Palm. We did David the Wim Hof, and uh, we we had me and you together. Just and together. this sounds goofy, guys. To yeah. Me and Al, yeah. and if you see this, it's two grown men. <laughs> we, it's hard to do. It's, it's kind of crazy, but it was the coolest thing because you're doing this cool. breath work that connects connects me. For me, I could talk for myself. It connects me. 
to 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 my subconscious and i was able to, i mean we we just get this peace and this inner tranquility that you can't get any other way unless you're doing drugs i guess i don't do drugs i don't i mean so i don't know no. but i guess you can get the same tranquility if you took some listen know, Al, drugs. i i have i have used psilocybin very high mm -hmm. levels for those of you guys that, that know me i've told you the stories from four high as four grams at a time I've had THC as high as 250 milligrams at one time. I have had a thousand milligrams in a, in a ceremony of peyote. Like I have gone with hallucinogens on a very high level and there's nothing that compared to that ceremony we did with Jack that was complete oxygen. Literally it is by far and away the absolute most spiritual fulfilling peaceful experience I have experienced in my 34 years of life. And now I continue to practice that by myself. Mm -hmm. It's much harder by yourself than when you're coached through a group. That's one of the things that we do in the mastermind. I know it sounds weird, but how many people ended up in tears through that experience? Everyone in that room said, I feel more relief. I feel more peace. I feel more tranquility. And it, it comes from just the power of breath. Yeah, it gets literally getting high on your own supply. It was it was powerful, man. I mean, to this day, I'm still touched by the first time I ever did breathing treatment back in 2013, and then when you and I did the treat, you know, the work last year in December, we sh you restarted that that I had been doing since like five years before, and once you restarted it, because we forget, guys, we're so busy with business and life and kids, you know. And how cool is that, that you, you know, in our mastermind, we started that again last in December, and then we end up doing a live mastermind event in New Orleans, and then we hire somebody, a facilitator, to come and do it. <laughs> it it was blows like, my mind. A year before that, I hadn't even been doing that, even though I did it back in 2013. Did it time. start back up in December when I was there? Yes. Is that when you started back yeah. up? Yeah. Dude, I, I, was, I was addicted. I am, yeah. I'm still addicted to this day. I do it every freaking day. Yeah. Yeah. And remember i was like dude how you gotta check this out like it's insane like the freaking the euphoria that comes through your body yeah. yeah the freaking the trip that you go on is just pure bliss yeah. i still remember jack i still remember jack whispering don't resist the resistance and I, i've shifted it now to allow the allowing how often are you resisting something in your life in your business in your finances in your health and your yeah. relationships i mean for, for for freaking two years i've been resisting the resistance inside of my own relationship, right? Yeah. And, and how, how many, for how long have I been talking to you, Al, to, to, about my own relationship for a while. and the challenges or let's there? just say for <laughs> at least two years. At least two at years. At least two years. And, and right? just, just, just at our last mastermind event, we had a great talk about that. And right after the breath work, which by the way, is exhausted. Like next time we oh do it God. during our next mastermind event, we're gonna plan it differently because we put it right in smack in the middle of one of our main session days and it literally <laughs> destroyed the other half. We had to, at least it didn't more. destroy it. It made, it made it so much better because of the way the energy went. No, it was amazing. Okay. But the point is it really caught, it, it's this release of energy and this power, powerful, just, it's just, a, it's just an incredible feeling. So cool. I'd okay. love to see a couple right. of new faces in the Mastermind event in November in Ogden, Utah. So make sure you message me if you have any questions about this uh, breath work. I, I'm fortunate enough to have somebody locally here who I hired to facilitate a breath session for me. But during our next Mastermind, we're also going to have somebody. Uh, hopefully, we'll identify and uh, and we'll bring him in there. So I'm excited about that. November 12th, right? November 12th, that week. It's going to be there. We're going to have a two-day live event. BC is going to be there. I'll be there possibly working on some other person that will like just blow your socks off that will be there uh, i believe the event pricing for the two-day event this is not the mastermind for the two-day event is 197 dollars to be there at, at that you can also live stream it i don't know how the live stream works bc is gonna get that set up but he i believe he's gonna have it at 97 dollars for the live stream so if you guys want to know about that event get uh, that event get in touch with me it's gonna freaking be amazing then we're gonna have another two days with my vip platinum partners in our live two-day mastermind where we really break down your real estate business, your financial freedom, and your fulfillment, your peace, your joy, and that personal fulfillment from deep inside. Al Torrey Worldwide, thanks for being here. You can check him out at Al Torrey underscore on the, on, uh, the what's it called, <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, Make right. sure you connect with him. Send all of your referrals to, to South Florida, to Al Torrey. Uh, any of your Utah referrals come out to me, the WGR. I'm on Instagram too, at the WGR. 
Don't follow me on Snapchat because I don't put any snaps on there at all. So don't go there, even though I have one. Um, check us out on YouTube and make sure you apply for the mastermind. Reach out if you have any questions. You definitely want to. Oh, let's talk about the structure of the mastermind real quick. We have two live events yeah. uh, per year. Those are three, four-day events. And then the other thing is, is we actually have a um, every other week hour uh, session where we have an hour group meeting via Zoom, very in-depth. Uh, we, we just do some, we do some powerful conversations in there. And then we also have where I'm doing 15 minute breakthrough calls per month with every individual that's in the mastermind, just really uh, helping people blow through that next level. Yep. It's exciting, man. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, I, I got to, and uh, I got to run. We'll talk. See ya.